Welcome to the third tutorial in our PIC 18F 14K50 microcontroller series here, where we are basing this on C instead of assembly as we did in our previous series. This tutorial, we will actually be doing the exact same thing we did in tutorial two, basically a hello world or blinky project, but we will be using the MPLAB co code configurator, the MCC, MPLAB code configurator, which is a plugin of MPLAB IDE. And we're going to show how, in this case, it might not actually simplify things too much because this is such a simple project, but you should be able to see exactly how this would scale extremely well as you're going to much, much more complex projects. So with that, let's go over this just in case you didn't watch tutorial number two, which if you didn't, go watch it but I'm still going to assume you didn't. And let's just talk about what we have here really quick. The schematic diagram here is we basically have our Picket 4 connected to our PIC 18F 14K50, and all it will be doing is programming it and providing power. And then we have our resistor connected to pin 16, and then our LED connected from our resistor to ground. And that is it. So the schematic is extremely straightforward. And all we are going to be doing here is toggling it on and off every 50 or every half second, turn it on, half second, turn it off, half second, turn it on. And that is all we are going to be doing. So with that, let's actually jump in and start looking at MPLAB and exactly how the code configurator works and how it can simplify things. Okay, so this is the Bear MPLAB, MPLAB X IDE, and uh, they have their splash screen right here that I got rid of, and I deleted all my previous projects to make it completely clean. So, just like we did in tutorial two, we will want to start a new project. So we just go up here to new project. Again, it will be a standalone project. Even, so, even though you'll see this MCC Harmony right there, that's not what we want. We want the standalone project. We click next. Then we select our PIC, which again, this is going to be the advanced 8-bit version of the PIC 18F 14K50 right up there at the top. And I will be using the PIC at 4 as I did previously. Not going to have any support debug header, and we are going to be using the XC8 compiler. And let's just call this blinky LED underscore MCC, because we will be using the MCC. Set as main project, use project location as project folder. Um, hmm, interesting. Nah, I think that's fine. Leave it alone. Encoding. Now finish. Now, you will notice here, as this is loading, that I have this button here, the MCC. And that's very obviously what we want to go into. But this doesn't come as part of it. It might... You might have it already. You might have selected it when you were downloading it, whatever. If you did not, however, you can go up to Tools and plugins and it will pop up and have updates available plugins don't even worry about all that just go to search mcc uh go to well it'll be available probably let's try that again well for you it'd be available for me it's installed because it's installed either way go to whichever one works for you search for mcc and then you will see mp lab code configurator and if you have not already downloaded it select it and download it and activate it and all that sort of stuff. I actually had to download a couple of other different things. It took a while, probably five, 10 minutes for it all to download and for the first time to run through. And if that's the case, just pause this video, let it run through its thing. But once it is done and you have restarted MPLAB, then you can come back to this point and finally click on the MCC button. So that takes a moment. There we go. All right, so we have our content manager wizard, and as you can see, you can only click on the MCC Classic. It makes things easy for you. So we click on that, and then we have our required content and our optional content. So there are additional things that we can use here, which if you want, you can go through and look at them for yourself, like the USB framework. That looks fascinating, something that we might be able to use later. You have your digital analog converter. You have bootloaders. I know Sergey loves bootloaders, so I wouldn't be surprised if we do something with that later. But for right now, we can just hit finish and it will once again, take a little bit of time to put everything together. All right, fantastic. Now our entire screen has changed dramatically. And so let's just take a moment to go over what each one of these windows represents. 
But frankly, at this point, I highly recommend you just, you pause this video and you kind of click around, look at it, figure things out. The only way you're gonna become comfortable with this is if you just spend some time messing around with it. I can say, hey, this does this, this does that, but you're not gonna really understand how it's all connected until you're clicking and you are figuring it out yourself. So if you want to, feel free to pause the video and um, mess around, or you can do so after I go over the different areas. So we're basically going to have our five different parts. We have one, two, three, four, and five five down here. Uh, this uh, down in the bottom left corner, that's exactly what we had previously. It's just giving us a little bit of information and it's not necessarily MCC related. So up here in the top left corner, we have the resource management area. So it's basically just telling us what our different resources are. And as you can see, when I click on the different ones, it changes here in the main window. Our second one down here, this is our device resources. So it just gives us a uh, list of some of the resources that we have. As you can see, we have the ADC, the Comparator, DAC, ECCP, the UART, and all of those sorts of things. And so this is just our device resources area. Finally, as I mentioned, this is our main window, and this is where we primarily work and play, where we make the majority of our changes. And then over here, we have our pin manager, where you can manage and look at all of the pins visually and right away you might notice that, hey, wait a second, this is a QFN module, not, um, not a DIP package, which we will take care of as we come down here to the pin manager window. So this is the uh, pin manager package view, and then this is the pin manager grid view. So this is where you can control each one of those pins, and we will do so in a second. But first things first, since I don't have a QFN pin, we want to change this to a DIP. So if you watched the first video, you will remember that we had to configure the bits all independently. That was something after we did all of the software or all of the firmware in the main portion of our program, we actually had to go configure the pins and then copy, paste it up at the top of our program and it's a bit messy. However, in this, under our main window in the easy setup, we have all of this stuff and frankly, I haven't made any changes to it. It automatically went to the internal RC oscillator internal clock is one megahertz and uh, it's all set up basically how we want even with the watchdog timer controlled by the SWD TEN bit. So very nicely it creates a lot of these configurations that we had to do manually before. Uh, the only thing that we will want to change in this is that we want to get rid of the low voltage programming enable. So here we've gotten rid of the low programming voltage enable. We made sure everything else is good to go the way we wanted it to. And let's just take a moment to look at our interrupt module and our pin module and notice that there's nothing going on right now. And with our interrupt module, we're not gonna do anything in this tutorial. It's not a big deal. We're not gonna be touching this. We will later though, definitely. But in this pin module, it says no configurable pin selected. So we need to change that. Now, since we are using the exact same setup as we did in tutorial two, we know that our resistor is connected to pin 16, which is RC0. So as we go down here, we can find port C, pin 16, and let us make that an output. So I can literally just click right here, and hey, now it's an output. It, that, that's all I, I needed to do. And notice how it, basically made it so, hey, you can't use it as both an input or an output. And as you change this, as you modify these, you will notice that they're connected so that it makes it simpler for you. So you don't accidentally say, hey, I wanna use this pin as both an analog input and also as a interrupt input. Like, oh, oh wait, that, that doesn't really work. Then that can be something that happens if you're not being careful here. This forces you to say, oh, this is going to have some sort of traffic jam with some other input or output or pin, and it takes care of that for you, which is a nice little feature. So now we've selected that, and you can see it's actually popped up here in our package view, and it's obviously here under our pin modules. Now we can give it a custom name, and I want to call it Blinky LED, even though Sergey in his tutorial called it LED1, which is much more professional. Um, but this is the opportunity where we can look and say the pin name is RC0, as we know. It's a pin module, it's a GPIO, that's what it's set up to be right now. Uh, we can say, hey, we want it to start high, which we don't, so we're just gonna leave that alone. 
It defaults to being analog, which we don't want. So let's click that. And it says it's output, which is exactly what we want. And I'm curious, if I click this, does it change down at the bottom? Oh yes, oh yes it does. See, it's beautiful when things work the way they should. Also want to note that over here, you can see that my custom name of Blinky LED popped up right there. So again, makes things nice and simple. So even though we won't use these, there are a couple more options that we might use in the future. And that's just your WPU, which is your weak pull up, your OD, your IOC, so your interrupt, interrupt control and stuff like that. And since we can't, since uh, RC0 doesn't even have these options, notice there is nothing to select. So now, unless I missed something important, we are ready. So let us go back up here and we can generate our MCC code. And this might take a moment as well. So it's creating a bunch of files, interlinking them and making everything beautiful. Now that things are done, we can jump over to projects and you will notice that it created for us some header files uh, device config.h, mcc.h, pin manager.h, and then also some source files, which is our main.c and a, our device config.c, mcc.c, and pin manager.c. Now, these are interesting in that you don't really want to touch any of these MCC generated files. Nothing in these areas do you want to touch, but they are great to look at. And I think the most important one would be your pin manager.h. And this is where it tells you some of the things that you can do. So if you remember from tutorial two, to do the pin toggle, we had to do that XOR command and it was simple, but not exactly straightforward. Whereas with this, if you come down, you can see that MCC creates it so that if I want to toggle things, all I have to do is call blinky LED underscore toggle and it will do this work for me and it'll toggle the bit for me and it's fantastic. So. This pinmanager.h is a great resource to check to see what has been automated for you so you don't have to write more complicated code that's already been done for you. And not that any of this is complicated, but it's nice to make it even more simple. So you can see here, we can change the input output, the port, uh, set high, set low, the toggle, get the value, all these sort of things. So again, this pinmanager.h is a very useful resource. Um, then we also have the mcc.h and the device config.h, which are also nice to look at if you need a little bit more information, but I don't think that they're nearly as helpful as that pen manager.h. Yep. Well, even though this device configuration does show the crystal frequency of one megahertz. So fantastic. Let's close these and open up main.c. Okay, so it should be noted that until this point, we have not written a single line of code. We have not done a single thing. So now we are finally on in main.c and to blink this LED, we will only need two lines of code. Now I'm going to close this commented code because it's kind of annoying and you can just delete it. It doesn't really matter. Oh yeah, I think I might just delete it. Cause those just, I don't need those to pop up. Okay, so it includes instead of the xc.h or xc8.h, it just includes mcc.h and then it gives you a couple of things like, oh, do you want to enable the peripheral interrupts? You just uncomment that line. Do you want to disable them? Uncomment this line. So it gives you a couple of more things, but again, we're not gonna be using interrupts in this. So we can completely ignore that and delete it if we want, but I'm not going to worry about it too much because it's not as long and obnoxious as the other. But finally, we are down here in while one, and all we need to do is add our application code. So let me copy in my code really quick. Okay, so I just copied in my two lines of code here, and you'll notice a slight difference from mine versus Sergey's written tutorial, and that's because he named his LED LED1, and I named mine Blinky LED. But um, you'll notice that all I have here is the Blinky LED underscore toggle, and then a delay of 500 milliseconds. And, that, and that's it. That is all we have to do. Now, the funny thing is that we spent, I don't know, five, 10 times longer doing the configuration. And so from a purely practical standpoint on this one, this doesn't necessarily make sense. But hopefully as we went through this, you could see how, oh, if I want to use all of these different peripherals, or if I want to use all these different interrupts, if I want to use analog and whatever, that this will 
significantly ease the pain and uh, time-consuming minutia that sometimes can be overwhelming when you're dealing with embedded systems. So with all of this, despite everything else being simplified, you still need to go in and make it so when we run this, it is getting power from the Picket 4. So let's go to our Blinky LED MCC project, properties, wait for it to load, Picket 4, power, power target from Picket 4, and then let's change that to 4.75 again, because that seemed to work so well last time, and then hit OK. Now if I didn't miss anything, when I hit upload, it should build and upload just beautifully. Let's cross our fingers. Make, build successful, connecting to programmer. Yes, I know that I need this to be five volt tolerant. All right, there we go. And the LED is blinking. And once again, we are successful. So that's really it for the MPLAB code configurator. It can be a bit daunting at first, but as you get more used to it, it'll be quite straightforward. Uh, we were able to get this LED to toggle on and off. Now, Sergey loves practicality. He loves getting his hands dirty, and he realizes that the best way to learn is for you to get your hands dirty. So as homework assignment, he thinks that you should do the same exact circuit, but add another resistor and LED and make it so they turn on and off opposite to each other just so you get your feet a little bit more wet, you venture out there a little bit and really truly understand what's going on here. It's not too difficult, but it should be a fun challenge for you. So I highly recommend you do that. If you found this interesting, please give this video a like, subscribe to our channel so that you can get notifications for the rest of these tutorials as we go through them. Have a great day and we will catch you in the next one.